Testing one, two, three. Okay. So, AB and I decided that we wanted to do a brief recording about our experience last night at the Black Star concert with Feral Monch and 13 and Dead Press. AB, yes. do you want to start? Um, what is the name of the venue again? Mission Ballroom. Mission Ballroom, first and foremost, is an amazing concert venue live venue for, for, for performance. Um, the sound system, the sound engineers, simply amazing. The layout of the, of the place is, is amazing. So that's the first thing that I noticed as an experience that I was already amped about even yeah. before the concert started. Yeah, and the lighting was super dope in there. Yeah. Um, they had this huge, disco ball it, it bars just was, everywhere two levels yeah and it was almost like everything was in the round yeah um bars at on the balcony level yeah but we gotta we gotta before we get to our experience we have to talk about the experience before the experience so ab and i have never used the yonder pouches um over yonder y-o-n-d-r.com is the website if you want to find out more about those but um <laughs> so apparently it allows you to have you know fully immerse yourself in the experience and be truly connected to the artists who are on the stage performing none of this mm -mm. no screen between you and the artist yeah. and i don't know maybe i kind of struggled with it a little bit at first i was like well i need to be able to communicate with someone particularly someone in you know 13's camp um in between so i was like well i'll just go watch the show and then come in between sets and whatever but i loved that i i didn't have it and it was all about i'm gonna remember this with my eyes anyway you you tell me what how you felt about it i it's no problem for me because i'm not a a, a big first conscious pictures picture taker when i'm in the middle of an experience i don't even think about necessarily trying to take pictures in the moment like I'll take pictures beforehand of like the setup and the room but after that I'm I'm in I'm in it so yeah. it didn't really bother me at all yeah so before <laughs> before we went we were talking about yonder and AB decided he wants to create his own yonder yeah I mean because yonder is really I get it. it it's sort of like a country term so I mean for the more urban crowd we got to come up with a, you know, a variation of yonder. And, and okay, y'all. So listen, AB and I are in Denver right now. We're here for the Black Star concert. Feral Monch, 13, and Dead Prez. We're getting ready to go to the show, but we can't record anything. <laughs> they we have... just got to stay right chill. <laughs> AB, you already gave it away. They need what? They need a black version of Over Yonder. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and commission that and make it right chill. <laughs> I didn't think you were country though. You were a little bit country when you said that. Well, if Yonder's country, I gotta do the other side of country. <laughs> the other side of the tracks. Where you at, Over Yonder? Where you at? Right chill. <laughs> so instead of Over Yonder, your phone gonna be right chill. <laughs> so I said, where are you at? Oh, I'm over yonder. Where are you at? Right chill. Okay. So put it in your pouch. Right yeah, chill. Right, right, right. You know, right. I kind of feel like though you should get mystical to help you promote that. Uh, because yeah. you could be the pouch That's, right chill. The hey, pouch right that, chill. That, that, the is, right that is the music chill. for the spot. Yeah. So maybe you already got it, y'all. Maybe you're going to have the right chill pouch. So, all right, let's start uh, first set right out the gate. 13 hits the stage. Feral Monch, uh, Marcus Machado was in the house, my fellow Aquarius. And uh, Daru Jones was not there. I don't know the name of the drummer. I just lost his name. I had it in my mind. See, these Talented are cat, though. Super. Yeah, killed it. And, and he had a key, uh, keyboard player. I can't remember his name either. Um, man, it was incredible. The energy was ridiculous. He sounded so clear and precise and just powerful like yeah he it was and this is my very first time seeing feral munch perform live so y'all know he's in my top five so i'm like oh my god i can't believe 
believe we finally get yeah. to see him. I don't know how 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 much they've been out since the album dropped though. They just really? probably started. Not a lot. The pandemic caused a lot of that for them. You yeah. know, they were supposed to start touring right after the album dropped. And you know, a lot of I'm I'm gonna tell our listening audience. A B and I are actually on the thirteenth a magnificent day for an exorcism album. The very first track is Cult Forty Five. It's and a skit. It's a basically. skit. Yeah, it's a it's a voiceover work essentially. And we were pretending to be like if you've ever seen The Exorcist, it's the two priests that are doing the exorcism. I'm the one praying. <laughs> well, we're praying together. But yeah, so that's us on the album. So of course, you know, I've got a little bit more personal investment in this 13 project as well. But overall, like, I'm just really dying to see this band live uh, for the first time for me. And anyway. For lack of a, a better description, think Rage Against the Machine. Oh my gosh, yeah. We so were saying, and didn't you say they're on tour right now? Like, that would be dope as hell to yeah. see them together, especially at a venue like Mission. Like, that, that, was, that would be super dope. Um, but yeah, anyway, we, we were on the floor at that point. I, I want to be as close as possible so I can, you know, rap along with every single, especially when Goat's Head came on. That's my shit. And then uh, Amnesia, one of my favorite tracks from the album. Scarecrow, I loved. And of course, Feral Munch had to do Simon Says for the true, you know, fans. Um, but yeah, dope, dope as hell. Um, quick little intermission. I go release my yonder. So with the yonder situation, uh, you can go to a designated phone use area. And it's kind of like, um, you know, when you go to the store to buy clothes or whatever, and it's got the tags on it, they release it with the magnet, pull it out the pouch. You go to the little designated area and use them. And uh, anyway, so I'm checking my messages and stuff in between, visiting the merch booth and uh, we decide to, where did we sit the, that time? We just stayed up in the balcony this time. Yeah. Dead the Prez. Yeah, for the rest of the show, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, you start with Dead Prez. Well, Dead Prez, would, would, which I didn't know or realize, hadn't been performing since, bef since probably a little bit before the uh, pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So, it definitely had not been out performing. So, they said... Like during their set, you know, this is the first time that we're performing since the pandemic and, you know, it feels good and it, it sounded like they didn't lose a step. Yeah, I was about to say, you wouldn't even know it at all. Like, they were so strong. Yeah. And uh, the crowd was really feeling the hell out of them. Um, and I gotta admit, like, I'm not a huge Dead Prez fan. Uh, Hip Hop yeah. is definitely a familiar song to me, but like, I've never really gotten into their discography so it was really refreshing to see them and hear them live and hear how well they perform like seamlessly, vocally seamlessly. yeah like, like, like they had not missed a beat or a step at all uh, i think Stickman was talking about being sick at one point and going through this transition mm -hmm. of becoming healthy and he got a new book out that he's it was promoting so yeah they're getting back on track with was, i think thing. called the five principles yeah. is that what it's called yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Dead Prez, dope-ass performance as well. Uh, quick intermission again. It really really was a quick turnaround overall. I, I like shows that start on time, too, yeah. <laughs> and, and run, you know, at a decent time. And so then, out comes. First, out comes, so set changes. So they take the instruments off after Pharaoh Munch and 13 perform yeah. because they're the only group that had instruments, and it's just a DJ booth, basically. Yeah. So uh, Dead Prez had a DJ. When Dead Prez left the stage, the only thing they changed about the set was a white covering right in front of the DJ booth. And we didn't have any idea what that was going to be for. I guess I might have assumed that it was going to be for some kind of graphics to be shown on the white background, but it wasn't for that. We come to find out when Most Def and Talib hit the stage, Most Def pulls out. I don't know whether he had a marker or a spray, uh, a spray it looked can. Like, it looked like spray paint. Yeah, it might have been a spray can, but he starts tagging it up. Yeah. I, I couldn't read what it said for a little Okay, and so uh, Yasin Bey <laughs> comes out and yeah. he's painting the, uh, it had to be spray paint of some sort, but it yeah. says, in a moment beyond time. And so, of course, that was kind of a theme throughout the night. Like, there was, I would say he did a lot of 
subliminal things in a way. He just has a way of making you think, um, pulling you into his presence, his energy. And I told A.B. throughout the whole performance, Talib, I love you. However, I've seen you before. When I saw Yasin, it was just like, I can't believe I'm hearing this man's voice for the first time in person. And he just filled the space with his beautiful voice. Again, shout out to the sound engineers because they made everybody sound amazing. You know, um, people didn't have to yell yeah. on the mic. They could just use their regular tone pretty much and, and do their thing. And Black Star, man, I mean, I think this was also the first time that they had performed anything from the new album live, which I didn't realize. I thought they had been out at least once or twice before. But this was the first concert where they actually performed tracks from the new album live. And if you've already heard the new album, some of the criticism is of the way it was recorded and the sound quality and the production of it, even though Mad Lib did all of the beats. Um, but when you hear it live and you hear it loud, it kind of balances out that criticism because yeah. you get a chance to really hear the music. Because they were recorded in what, like hotel yeah, rooms yeah, and yeah. random places yeah, yeah. over over a space of time. But it's yeah. like, it's a true pandemic album to me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they they made it work. Yeah. Uh, no fear of time. I believe I'm saying the title right, yeah. which is only available on Luminary. Yeah. Um, I think it's dope as hell that that's the way they're choosing to do it. You know, this time of, around. Um, one other thing that I wanted to point out that that uh, Yasin did as well. He kept bringing out flower petals and putting them all over the floor. And then he might like throw some, a few out in the crowd, but mostly they were all uh, over the stage. And it was so beautiful. Um, I wish I could just pick his brain a little bit about that. Uh, you, you know, you can kind of feel what his intention was behind it, but you really, I would love to hear him put that to words. Like, well, I was trying, you know, wanting to invoke this or whatever. And talking about not losing a step, these two hip hop luminaries are finishing each other's lyrics, sentences, thoughts yes. all night long during the performance, not missing a beat whatsoever. Hype men for each other. I don't other. know if they rehearse before they perform or that's just a culmination of being together so long yeah. over the years, but amazing chemistry between the two of these guys on stage and as they work together and work through the catalog even though we're talking about yeah. basically two albums as black star they both obviously did their solo stuff yeah um their hits from their solo careers as well that you know was seamless you know though what uh formerly most deaf did not do was miss fat booty i i assumed he was he might uh -huh. was going to do that but you know yeah didn't work out in the set list it's, but we know. got um auditorium is that the name of the track with slick rick the, the, oh my gosh i, I'm I, I don't on the remember name. the name of that track but it's the one featuring slick rick yeah. um what else the the main anyway of course we had our the solo um get by um uh the blast from talib yeah. but yeah. what i was really really spiritually connected to i would say was umi says well, I, knew, I knew he had to do that one Oh so my gosh! Yeah, you had to do that one. It was amazing, and it kind of brought me back to that time. Maybe remember when um, Santana kind of dipped in, dipped into that a little bit when we saw him in concert. Yeah. So it was just yeah, yeah. it was kind of a beautiful uh, experience. I don't know what else to really say about that. Um, but overall, like we, I felt like I left with my heart and soul completely full from this experience. Um, would definitely recommend going to see them if you ever get an opportunity to do that. Um, sidebar to the Denver experience, before the concert, we went to Hooligans and Mulligans. Shout yeah. out to that venue. Yeah. And we walk in and Tribe Called Quest is playing. Yeah. And then Talib and Most Def come on. As we're leaving. Yeah. And there was a guy who was sitting at the bar who um, also went to the concert and was going to the concert. And we were talking about something about the music and he kind of like chimed in and was yeah. laughing. And so I was thinking that too. Yeah. Um, talking about the, he bought a bunch of vinyl. Yeah, 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 yeah. When they first dropped and yeah. now it's like, you know, really yeah. valuable and whatever. So. Yeah. So it's just, it's just a cool lead up to and lead into experience for the concert. Yeah. Overall, super great experience. The crowd was loving it. 
The energy was incredible. Um, it, I really would like to come to another concert at Mission Ballroom. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. again, if, the if sound. You have, if you have a favorite artist and they're playing at the Mission Ballroom, uh -huh. and you can make it come. Get here. Yeah. And this is really my first time I've got to spend actual time in Denver and not just a layover. So, yeah, I've been, hey, woo, hey, B. Woo, 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 B. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you about the flowers. <laughs> I'll tell you about the flowers. <laughs> Let's let's take let's do the video about the flowers, okay? Bees like flowers. I had one before earlier. Bees like a bee is no. what they what it is no. because there was one no, earlier no, 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 that he no, no, wasn't no. even by the flowers. It was down there on the corner. Remember? And I'm not even wearing cologne, <laughs> so I don't know what's up. I told him, and then we go to the ramen bar, and I get the fly. What the heck? Like <laughs> he had to make his appearance on screen with us. Mm -hmm. All right, so there there's our black star. Shout out to Talib, Kwali, Yasin Bay. Bay, 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 Bay. Man, Deb Prez, uh, Farrell Monch, Marcus Machado with 13, and the entire 13 crew. Shout out to Zoe. Shout out to Zoe Ellis, um, Farrell's assistant. Uh, she's she's doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. That's all I got. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no. Yeah. We're going to be heading back to TULSA here in a little while, uh, enjoying the lovely weather here in Denver. Yeah, we it wasn't think supposed to be this lovely today, but it is. It's, it's supposed to rain, I think, pretty soon. Yeah. And uh, we're going to link up with an old classmate of mine and hit the train and head on back. So Back to the sun. <laughs> yeah. We got some sun, but it's not as hot here. All right. Peace and love, y'all.